Good morning. I am Carolyn Mall, music director here at St. John's United Church of Georgetown and Glen Williams. And it is my pleasure to welcome you today to our annual Christmas choral presentation. This year, for obvious reasons, we will not have a full choir taking part. However, I am very thankful to the members of the choir that were willing to step forward and sing in small ensembles, just one per part. And I hope you will enjoy the singing today. We usually repeat this musical presentation as a community concert, raising money for Food for Life Canada. And in honor of this, I invite you to make a donation to Food for Life Canada or to St. John's to help keep this important ministry going. Another Christmas tradition at St. John's is our annual candlelight and carol service in the Glen Sanctuary. And it is this service that inspired me to focus on using just carols for today's service. I hope our musical offering helps you to connect to the spirit of both our Georgetown and Glen sanctuaries. This is a Sunday that we try to give Reverend Norm some time off so that he can prepare for Christmas services, but don't worry, he will return and be with us again next week. I am thankful to all of our singers who were willing to rehearse via Zoom, to wear masks for the sanctuary rehearsals, to have their temperatures taken when they walked into the church, to answer COVID questions each time they came for a rehearsal or a recording, to use hand sanitizer and stay in their designated spots, deciding as a group, each group decided their comfort level with removing masks for the recording only and putting them on right away after. We hope you will enjoy this music and be singing along at home today. Thank you for being with us.
Hello. Today's scripture readings come from the book of Isaiah. And in these readings, uh, Isaiah recounts the need for Jesus to reassure his people, uh, now that they're back in Jerusalem, that God is going to fulfill his promises to them. Reading from chapter 61 in the Good News Bible, verses 1 to 4, and verses 8 to 11. Listen. The Sovereign Lord has filled me with his Spirit. He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people and defeat their enemies. He has sent me to comfort all who mourn, to give to those who mourn in Zion joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow, they will be like trees that the Lord himself has planted. They will all do what is right, and God will be praised for what he has done. They will rebuild cities that have long been in ruins. The Lord says, I love justice and I hate oppression and crime, and I will faithfully reward my people and make an eternal covenant with them. They will be famous among the nations. Everyone who sees them will know that they are a people whom I have blessed. Jerusalem rejoices because of what the Lord has done. She is like a bride dressed for her wedding. God has clothed her with salvation and victory. As surely as seeds sprout and grow, the sovereign Lord will save his people and all the nations will praise him. Please words to our use and understanding.
This reading is taken from the writings of Jan Richardson and the Quill for Sorrow. It's a blessing of hope. So may we know the hope that is not just for someday, but for this day, here, now, in this moment that opens to us. Hope not made of wishes, but of substance, made of sinew and muscle and bone. Hope that has breath and a beating heart. Hope that will not keep quiet and be polite. Hope that knows how to holler when it is called for. Hope that knows how to sing when there seems little cause. Hope that raises us from the dead. Not some day, but this day, every day, again and again and again. Hello and Merry Christmas. My name is Janelle Bascom and I was delighted to be asked to share these two readings with you. The first is a quotation from C. Joy Bell C. We all live in a world of both darkness and light while being a society that favors one over the other, forgetting that all butterflies came to be in darkness that all bees were born in hives, and every living finger and toe was formed in the pitch black of the womb. Now is the time to know 
that all you do is sacred. Now, why not consider a lasting truce with yourself and God? Now is the time to understand that all your ideas of right and wrong were just a child's training wheels to be laid aside when you can finally live with veracity and love. Now is the time for the world to know that every thought and action is sacred, that this is the time for you to compute the impossibility that there is anything but grace. Now is the season to know that everything you do is sacred. That second reading was Now is the Time by Hafiz. Thank you so much and Merry, Merry Christmas.
I'm Marilyn Mitten, and I want to share with you the following poem by Hamza El Din, entitled Dase Barama, Peace. The world shines above me, luminous as the moon, smiling like a rose, and a sweet benediction flows through everywhere existing. How beautiful life is. I marvel at people who are not in love with life. You, my child, are beautiful. And your beauty, like the beautiful thought of peace, belongs to the eternity. Detest war and destruction. When you go to the river bank and the sun sets in the evening, the waters of the river will be rippling softly. And from a distance in the twilight, you will see white sails. A song of the boatman will come from there. Today, no suffering, no suffering. The world shines above me, luminous as the moon, smiling like a rose.
A Christmas Blessing by John O'Donohue. May the angels in their beauty bless you. May they turn toward you your streams of blessing. May the angel of awakening stir your heart to come alive to the eternal within you, to all the invitations that quietly surround you. May the angel of healing turn your wounds into sources of refreshment. May the angel of the imagination enable you to stand on the true thresholds at ease with your ambivalence and drawn in new direction. Through the glow of your contradictions, may the angel of compassion open your eyes to the unseen suffering around you. May the angel of wildness disturb the places where your life is domesticated and safe. Take you to the territories of true otherness, where all that is awkward in you can fall into its own rhythm. May the angel of Eros introduce you to the beauty of your senses, to celebrate your inheritance as a temple of the Holy Spirit. May the angel of justice disturb you to take the side of the poor and the wronged. May the angel of encouragement confirm you in worth and self-respect that you may live with the dignity that presides in your soul. May the angel of death arrive only when your life is complete and you have brought every given gift to the threshold where its infinity can shine. May all the angels be your sheltering and joyful guardians.
as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, may I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen. I would like to offer my thanks to everyone who took part in this service. There are too many names for me to mention here, but the names have been listed throughout the service, and I am thankful to each and every one of you for words shared, be it spoken or sung. Thank you also to Drew and Bet for your technical support in this service. Christ came into the world to bring light into the world. A light of compassion, a light of healing, a light of peace, a light of hope, a light of joy. As we anticipate a different kind of Christmas, may we sense Christ's light enveloping us. May we receive that light. And may we choose as many ways as possible to be Christ's light.